Welcome to the series finale, episode five of our AeroPress series. And I, I couldn't I couldn't let it end without answering all of your questions. And so that's what we're gonna do today. You had a bunch, as an audience, of, of very consistent questions. Like lots of you asked the same thing in comments, on Instagram, on the subreddit. And so I'm gonna answer the main questions that you asked. Now, the first question we're gonna answer is actually kind of a surprising one to me. A lot of you asked this. You asked, can I reuse my paper filters? Is it okay? Does it make much of a difference to taste? And this surprises me for a couple of reasons. One, it's the only brewer I've ever heard of people wanting to reuse paper for. Now, I know Alan, the inventor of the AeroPress, is pro doing this. He says you can use them up to 10 to 12 times. I don't know about that. I'm going to do a simple test, side by side, a brand new filter versus one I've brewed with a couple of times. Can I taste the difference? Is it there? Then if it is or it isn't, that's kind of interesting. Why you want to reuse your paper is also kind of interesting. I would say if it's saving money, bear in mind, you know, yeah, it goes from being two pence down to one. They're very cheap to start with. I would say if you're trying to save the environment, be cautious of how you're rinsing your paper, using lots of hot, fresh water to do that. That has an energy cost as much as 0.17 grams of paper does. That aside, let's do the taste test. So in this brewer, it's gonna be our clean, brand new paper. And in this brewer, this one. Now you can see, it's a little discolored from being used. You can see that there are some fines sort of on the paper. It'll be interesting to see how tasteable this is in a blind test. Same dose, same recipe in both. We'll be using the technique that I recommend as the base technique from the Ultimate Technique video. If you haven't watched that, go and watch that. Then come back. Now this is kind of interesting just as I'm pressing now. It's actually a bit harder to press through the used filter. It might be because it's a bit more clogged from previous usage from the fines from other brews, but a bit more work. I'll duck out so I don't know which is which and we'll taste. So can I find, can I spot the bowl? The way I'm gonna approach this is very simple. I'm gonna look for one that has a little bit more bitterness. That would be the clue to me. That would be what I'd expect from a reused filter, but I might be wrong. I don't think it's this bowl. I don't think it's this bowl. If I had to guess, and it's not huge and there's a bit of variation here, but if I had to guess, I would say it's this bowl here is the reused paper. No. Huh, it's this bowl. It's um, a surprise for me. I don't understand why I felt like this bowl tasted different to this one, but that's the nature of triangle tasting. They're exactly the same liquid, right? Like that's how flawed the human tasting experience is. Honestly, this bowl, it's not very pronounced any off flavors. Now, important caveat here, this filter has been used three times today. I don't know how it would fare if I'd left it a day or two between uses where there would have been more opportunity for oxidizing it. But I would say if you want to use a paper again immediately, Certainly for one or two brews afterwards, I think I think you're fine. That's a surprise for me. I thought it would be much clearer. It wasn't. Let's move on to the next question. Now, quite a lot of you asked the question, which coffee is best suited to the AeroPress? Or how do I get the most out of floral coffees with the AeroPress? Or, you know, does it work better with some coffees than others? Can I use espresso roast in it? All, all of these kind of questions to me are bundled up in one. And, and here's my approach and my thoughts. The AeroPress is a brewer and, and it's just a sort of platform for getting flavor out of coffee. It has a great deal of uh, potential to mess with your variables, which means I think you can adapt it around almost any coffee. That's part of its charm. I don't think some coffees work better than others in an AeroPress. I think some coffees are easier to brew than others. I think that's true, but I don't think the AeroPress necessarily suits one kind of brew. I would be looking to adapt my technique to, to sort of get the most out of a coffee, right? If, if it's a coffee where what I love about it is texture driven, then I wouldn't be afraid to use a slightly higher dose and a longer steep time to get the kind of fullest experience out of it. If it's a more floral coffee, then I might wanna make sure I'm using the highest possible temperatures and, uh, you know, and make sure I'm grinding fine enough to get everything out of that, but actually dropping my dose a little bit to have a little bit more sort of room for clarity of flavor, especially florals. But that's not about the AeroPress. It doesn't suit one coffee over another. Uh, I think its its appeal is it's incredibly flexible. The next question is kind of a two questions in one, or at least two different questions with one answer. So a lot of you wanted to know, how would I approach bypass brewing, right? If I wanna use the AeroPress for brewing for two, if I wanna try and get two cups out of this, what would my recommendations be? And a lot of you asked, what's my recommendations for iced coffee from an AeroPress? And it turns out the answer is basically the same. So in both of these brewers, I'm gonna double up my ground coffee dose. So 22 grams goes into each one of these. And I'm gonna be steeping a bit longer because I've got more coffee to extract 
it's ground where I would usually grind it. I could have gone a little finer. I'm happy just to extend time here. So I'm going to steep for probably four minutes on both of these to get a good extraction of this higher dose. I'm going to use as much water, hot water, in the brewers as I can. Now I know from testing that we're 22 grams in with bloom, all that kind of stuff, I can get about 240 grams of water in before it starts to get a little bit sketchy. Obviously a lot of that's foam, but still I don't want to go much higher than that. So in both cases, with 22 grams of coffee and 240 grams of hot water, I'm missing about 160 grams. That's how much ice I have in this one here that'll do a lot of the melting and cooling as we brew. And here I'll add 160 grams of hot water to sort of bring it back to a more normal concentration. We'll brew them and we'll taste them and talk about them. We want to melt as much of the ice as possible. That'll bring us back to a normal state. But worst case scenario, it doesn't all melt. As long as it's cold, that's good. I'll put it into a nice chilled glass with some ice. There'll be a little bit more dilution over time as well that'll bring us back to that kind of normal strength. It is a very pleasant brew, actually. Um, in my experience, you don't kind of get the same clarity of flavor. You get a sweet cup, a balanced cup, uh, a full-bodied kind of rich brew this way, but there's something about it I feel like you just miss out inevitably on just like a little bit of extraction that, that means that this is by no means disappointing, but in an A-B test, would it just be missing a little bit of something? But Broadly speaking, use as much water as you can in your aeropress uh, and get as much extraction as you can down there before you dilute down later. This isn't the only time we're going to talk about this style of brewing though, so we'll come back to that in a bit. The iced brew, very tasty. Great for summer. You know, that, that texture is there. It's, it's nice and rich and full and pleasing. It's a hot day outside. This is a great way to drink coffee. It's a great way to produce enough coffee for a couple of people to sit together in the sun and have a nice time. Recommended. Now with the iced coffee in particular, you can scale this down. If you want to make just one iced coffee for you, you could use 11 grams, half the amount of water you usually would, and then the requisite amount of ice in there. It's it's really the same as the iced pour over method. If you haven't seen it, it's up here if you want to watch it. But now we're going to go back to the topic of paper filters again and ask the question, is two papers that much better than just one? A lot of you ask this question, should you be using two papers? Do you get a better result, a cleaner brew? I would expect you would, similar to the ACA papers that we tested in the previous video. These two papers would be thicker than one. Aeropress papers are very thin, they let a lot through compared to something like a, a V60 paper. So this makes sense. The question is, is the difference big enough that I can taste it blind? That's always the test. So again, another triangle will come from this. So on this side, we'll brew the one paper. On this side, we'll brew the double paper. Neither are rinsed. Uh, maybe that'll help me, maybe that won't. I don't think doubling the amount of paper is consequential, to be honest, but we'll see. Let's go. In terms of one being cloudier, one being clearer, with a gentle press on both, I don't think it's particularly apparent. But will it manifest in the taste? That's the question. So I will again step out of the way, will set me up a little blind triangle test, and we'll see what happens. This is where you start to play games with your own head. Am I looking for a single bowl of a double filtered or a single bowl of a single filtered coffee here? I don't know which is which way around we're looking necessarily. And so you know, I have this double option in my head, which is if it's just one bowl of a single filter, then, then I think it's this one. If it's one bowl of a double filter, then I think it's this one. I'm going to go with this bowl here, which feels just a little bit cleaner than the others. I will say if I'm right, if this turns out to be correct, I'm still not sure it's worth using two papers if you're, if you're pressing gently. A harder press would have a bigger impact unquestionably, but for a gentle press, as I prefer to use it, I'm not sure I need two, but let's see. That is not an odd one out. That is not an odd one out. Indeed, this, this bowl in the middle. No, I can't taste it. I can't taste it. I'll go back now that I know that it's the different bowl. They taste the same. They taste the same. They really do taste the same. I'm just not sure I could recommend using two papers when one does a pretty good job. I'm not sure you get that much of an improvement in terms of cleanliness. In fact, I can't taste the difference. I could with the ACA papers, which is kind of interesting, but with these ones, I can't really. Maybe if you're pressing really hard, it might make a difference. But ultimately, I would say, don't worry too much. If you're pressing gently, one paper is fine. Let's clean up. Do a couple quick questions. So one question a lot of people asked was about metal filters. They said, do I need to grind differently to use a metal filter? And, and I would say no. If you're using the technique that I recommend, or even if you're using an inverted method, 
No. Uh, essentially, the extraction's really, really being done by the infusion stage. A little bit is being done in the percolation, but that's about a, a column of water evenly passing through a bed of coffee. It might be a bit easier to press, you know, with a metal filter. And I would not give in to temptation to press hard. That will make for a siltier, grittier cup. But no, I don't think you do need to grind differently for a metal filter. And then the next question, that's a nice, quick, easy question, is what about scaling the recipe? I did 11 grams to 200. What if I want to drink more coffee? Right, we've seen that the AeroPress can accommodate more liquid. So yes, if you want to scale it up to 14, 50 grams to say 250, 270 mils of water, go for it. Absolutely, you should be the same in terms of steep, agitation, press time, all of that kind of stuff. It might take you a little bit longer to press, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. Now, a lot of you had questions about these. These are the AeroPress dice that we made a few years ago now, actually. And you asked, are they ever coming back? And the answer is no but there's some good news. The original set like this, no, we're never gonna make them again. But we did work with the World Aeropress Championship for them to make their own custom set. So those are still available. If you're not familiar with them, the idea is very simple and each of the dice is a different variable of Aeropress brewing. So when you roll them, it produces a recipe for you. You can roll a little bit over 7,000 different recipes which is kind of ridiculous, but that's kind of the joy of the AeroPress. So you'd end up with like, you know, your desired brew temperature, your dose of coffee and water, your method, be it inverted or standard, your grind size and steep time, and some stirring techniques. And put that together, you've got a brew. So they're really fun, but we're never gonna make them again, but there are a different set available. I'll leave a link down in the description below for those of you who are still curious. Now there is one very big question left to answer. Why is my technique so different from the World Aeropress Championship style techniques. Those are often very different in terms of dose, all of that kind of stuff, to what I'm doing. So why? Why am I so far away from that? Are those better, worse? What do I think? We'll touch on that after a couple of things. Firstly, this video has a sponsor, so it means there's another giveaway. We're gonna give away another 25 Aeropresses. It's open to pretty much anyone, anywhere in the world that we can get an Aeropress to. If you don't have an Aeropress and you need one, just enter. And this is possible because we have a short ad from this video sponsor, which is Squarespace. From websites, portfolios, online stores, to even marketing tools, Squarespace is a kind of all-in-one that lets you build a beautiful presence online for you or your business. Building a website with Squarespace is incredibly easy. Start by picking one of their templates, and they have a lot depending on the different style of website that you need. So let's say you're a cafe wanting to show off what you do, pick a suitable template. Then begin to fill it with your words, your images, showcasing what you do that makes you so special. Once you've built a beautiful website, it gets even easier. There's nothing to patch or upgrade or install, and it automatically looks beautiful across every browser, across every single device. But as I always say, don't take my word for it. Sign up for a free trial below and just build something create something new, and when you're ready to launch, use code James Hoffman for 10% off any website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So here's our last side-by-side -side brew of the series. Now, I'll be brewing my technique, 11 grams of coffee, 200 grams of water. Over here, we've got 30 grams of coffee, a lot more coffee. This will go in with less water, only 100 grams of water. We'll steep for 40, 45 seconds, uh, we'll probably do it inverted, that's very common. We'll flip, we'll press quite gently, and then we'll dilute that liquid down with maybe 100 grams of water afterwards. I don't want to pick one person and feel like I'm singling them out. This style of brewing is very common, of this kind of high dose, less liquid in the brewer, dilution afterwards. So let's get these going, and then we can have a little taste. Competition brew and our my style brew. Now obviously, with a very large dose of coffee, anything from that coffee that's easily dissolved, there'll be a lot of that in there. So you'll have a high concentration of certain things. It is highly aromatic as a, as a kind of cup goes. This does not smell as intense, but again, that's not particularly surprising. There's three times more coffee, nearly, went into this cup than this cup. Let's have a little taste. Pleasant, nice acidity. It, it, it's, again, jam packed full of flavor has a kind of sweetness to it that's quite pleasant. Uh, let's compare it with this. Now, for me, there's a kind of softness to this cup in comparison to this one. This one's a little kind of sharper, spikier, punchier in a way. That's definitely desirable, I think, in a competition where you're trying to stand out from the crowd constantly. This style of brewing definitely creates a, a kind of punchier, bigger, almost caricatured version of that coffee. And if you're starting with really great coffee, you're inevitably gonna amplify some of those very positive traits. This style of brew is a little softer, a little calmer almost, but it's also less fatiguing. I could imagine drinking 
a big full cup of this and still wanting more coffee, being satisfied, but also wanting more. This comparatively is a little bit more fatiguing to me. To drink a lot of this would kind of blow out my palate. It would leave me kind of overwhelmed. I would be kind of mm, a cup maybe and, and then done, you know, and obviously caffeine's highly water soluble. I don't think you completely extract caffeine, uh, you know, in, in this kind of a brew method, but this will have a lot more caffeine in it than this one here will. And that matters to me. And so I think this is fun. I think this is interesting. It's a great way to sort of turn up some of the characteristics of a coffee. I don't necessarily think you have to go all the way to an extreme of 30 grams, you know, in the brewer. I think you could do it with 20 and actually have quite a good result and, you know, tune your recipe a little bit more to have a kind of punchier, more characterful cup. But I just really like the balance and complexity and just satisfaction of, of this style of brew. I just think it's just really enjoyable to drink. It leaves you wanting just a little bit more, which is how I, I want to finish a cup of coffee. I want to finish it a little bit sad because it was so good. But my preferences are not your preferences. And so if you've tried my method and you really don't like it, then that's okay. You should experiment with what you do like. There are loads of techniques out there. Go check the Ultimate Technique video. I left links in the description of that video for other recipes for you to try out and have some fun with. And that brings us to the end of this series. Now, I know some of you will still have unanswered questions. Maybe in the future, we'll come back to the AeroPress again. We'll experiment some more. But I think for now, hopefully, these five videos have kind of covered everything you might want to know about brewing with the AeroPress, enjoying it more, and give you a, a kind of guide to experimenting for yourself, discovering more about what you like and how to get there in the morning as easily and enjoyably as possible. Now, I'm kind of curious to find out what it is that collectively you'll all demand that I make next. Maybe it's the tiramisu video. Maybe it's the Kalita wave technique. Maybe maybe it's siphon brewing. I don't know, but I'm sure I'm sure you'll all work it out and let me know down in the comments below. And alongside that, let me know what I did miss out on. Let me know what we should look at in a future video, whenever that may be. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.